right? That's it. That's right. the show, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I, I no, think the pregame, the, the, the pregame, what what we're doing is it, it, that was really fun too. I'm sorry, you all fun. missed that part. <laughs> the six aisles. You can talk about the six aisles. Even oh, there goes a cat. Oh, even though my cat. Yeah, I was just mentioning. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you know this, but before we do the show, we have a little warm up to get our taste buds going, get us up to 40 percent plus alcohol level, just so we're not you know, burning ourselves with the first sip of the, the whiskey we're tasting on the show. So um, but six aisles available, uh, K&L and probably some other locations as well. It's a, a little bit uh, of uh, whiskey from each of the six islands. So you can have some island here. You're going to have some Aaron. You're going to have some Mull. You're going to have some uh, you know, uh, Highland, uh, some Orkney, you're going to have some Sky, you're, you're going to have, there's one other that I'm forgetting right now. I'm sure one's Jura. There we go. Okay. Anyways, there you go. It was delicious. It's very delicious. It's a very, very refreshing. And the price, you can't be, can't be beat. I think it's less than 30 bucks. So for now, oh, yeah. uh, right now, whiskey. Yeah. Uh, the last show that I watched when I was watching a show, I'm going to talk a little bit here between the show okay, too. Fine. Fine. Uh, David, uh, David Rosowski, everybody, <laughs> famous improviser. Oh my God. We, we will allow it. We will allow it. That's actually, I why love, you're, that's why you're on the show, Dave. I love it. Not just for my pretty face, but uh, I, I, the last, the, the show that I saw, and I can't remember the person's name, was a, a Chicago, a, a woman from Chicago. And, um, and y'all were talking about how it tasted like paint or paint thinner. That's, or, that was, was Kelly like, Lohman. And we had Kelly. Malort. We had Malort oh. on the show. She oh, brought we had Malort. the Malort. No, yeah. she talked about Malort. Y- y'all talked about Malort. Uh, and she had said that she had gotten some wild turkey that was grape flavor, a cherry flavor. And she was talking about how she went, she had just done a documentary and, uh, and, 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 and she had never had Malort. She was from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. I've never had Malort. And she's, and everybody was like waiting for her to go, that's horrible. And she went, that's not so bad. And I thought, I like that person. <laughs> uh, anyway, I thought it was really funny how, yeah. how she's a wonderful person. Really, yeah, I remember how the, like again that like that you're talking about this tastes like paint and it really it was like I, and it's such an interesting way to talk about whiskey because you really don't talk about it in that way. It's like uh oh, flavor of cask and the honey and the cork smell. And it's like yeah, oh, this is really has a WD forty kind of flavor. You'll to find it. that that's we appreciate that more. We love the metaphor, you know, being improvisers ourselves. We love the metaphor of of yeah. like, well, what mm-hmm. does this remind you of? What does this bring you to? Right. So right. um, if you haven't seen the show before, it's real super simple. We've sipped four whiskeys. The time codes are in the bottom down there. So if you can skip ahead, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching live, tough luck, you got to sit and listen with us. And uh, first we're going to start with this teeling. Here's a very special bottling. This is a, a single rum cask, uh, 50.2%. So it's Irish uh, whiskey it matured in a rum cask. That's it. Well, that's There's, exciting. I, don't... I love. I always love something that's matured in a rum cask. But don't Irish whiskeys? They don't usually do interesting, fancy stuff like that, right? I mean, don't they? Uh, not, not in general. Like uh, a lot of the Irish distilleries are owned by you know a very few companies, um, so they, they don't need to do a lot of variety because they they just have volume. Yeah. Um, but they're starting to be more independent, a little smaller Irish distilleries and uh, maybe two Oh, well, this, I like where we're starting. This has a, an interesting smell to it. I, I think that's a good oh smell. Wow, 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 wow. This it does have, like paint, a... it does have paint thinner smell. So. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It really does. Hey, everybody, smell that. Tell me I'm wrong. You're not wrong. I, that's in there, uh, yeah. There's I a bit get of that. like yeah. a baked potato with nutmeg i'm i get I'm, like it's an art room. Crazy. like it's like if you're a child and you go into you know you have a room full of paint and like glue and like it's like plasticine it's, maybe yeah it smells like all that stuff though it's not specifically any of them it's like an art room like mm. um the, so so uh when i was uh when i went to ireland i, I did the murphy's cat lab festival in uh in kilkenny uh many years ago and uh, my wife, I was married at the time. My wife and I just took a, like, we traveled around. We traveled around. We, after the festival, we traveled around in cars, and a car going around. I went to a city called Innistimon. And in Innistimon, there are 34 <laughs> bars in Innistimon. It's a small little place. And, and there's only 35 get, 
built uh, houses. Yeah. <laughs> if you get a, if you get apparently at that time, if you had a business license, you can open up, a, you can carry liquor, you can sell liquor, and this place was called uh, Undertakers. And I was sitting there drinking, and then the door opened, and a gurney came by no, with a person no. over. I swear to God, it's story. I have a picture. That was it. It was under in the back. But the bartender was a guy from Chicago. He was an Irish guy who worked in Chicago. And I said, give me – what whiskey do you like? And he poured me a Powers Irish whiskey. And mm-hmm. have you had Powers? Yep. It's Very just nice. delicious. And I said, pour me whatever else, you, you know, what everybody else has. And, and what, what this one that we have now is more closer to the powers in the reaction that I get, which is the other one. And I can't remember the name of it. It gave me what I the best described as a Mervs, the Merv. And a Merv is well, when you go, Merv. You know, when you drink something, <laughs> it just hits you. It's like, I Merv. Know, I don't know. And, yeah. Well, that's that's science. That's I'm science. Gonna we, I'm going to look for it. We are starting. We are starting at a pretty high ABV. Like we're starting at fifty point two, which is like we. Yeah. That's a big jump from like the that's forty of the. That'll of the, that'll merv you. Yeah. That'll merv. Yeah, that'll merv. This you. didn't merv. There's and and with powers, I feel like, it, and it's a it's just a tasty, real tasty, uh, whiskey. And they should say uh, John D. Powers, not a merv in the bottle. Uh, <laughs> and this is, it's not smooth, but it's it's really warm going down. Uh, mm-hmm. It fills up your entire mouth with um, mm-hmm. wood smoke. There's a wood smoky wood flavor to it. I think it's really important to to do a, 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 a sorbet. Mm-hmm. I, really I, I felt it. like in my mouth, I got splinters immediately. Like the wood is mm-hmm. so forward in this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. uh, definitely a, a, a real, real woody, woody flavor to it. There's something, Lumberjack. there's something sweet though, like cotton candy or something. It's like if there was a cotton candy stand made of like fresh, uh, fresh lumber and it just burned down, burned down. That's kind of what I'm getting. Another one of those flavors. Yeah. Boy, don't we all know that flavor? <laughs> it's a cotton candy, a wooden cotton candy stand that just burned down just flavor. Burned down. It yeah. just burned down flavor uh, in November. It's a November uh, cotton candy burning. It is. It is. It it's is like November, syrup, yeah. a syrupy sweetness. So maybe some tree sap in there, maybe some maple syrup or something to that. There's effect. also something that happens where before it really gets into your mouth, it kind of goes, it, for me, it goes out this, this schnoz that I have. And it's this warm sort of like, oh, that's just really good. That's just really, really good. This is a super friendly little dram. Yeah. yeah. I really friendly like is it. a really good way to put that. It's a, it's a super friendly little dram. Which is my nickname in college. <laughs> Congratulations! Uh, there, I'm trying to like find the rum in here, and I can I can kind of find it, but it's you, you it's, know it's it's it's, it's subtle, distant. How, it's distant. Does do you know how? Does it say how long it was in the rum cask? It, it does not. It just says a single rum cask, which makes me think it was matured in there. But for 25 years, I don't know. That's I don't know. So long. That's I such a long time. It can't have been in there 25 years. Did they even do put them in rum casts twenty five years ago? I, you know, that would have been last century. I, I don't know. All uh, records have been lost since that century, so we there's no way of knowing. I'm still when you say last century, I'm still thinking it's the 1800s. I'm just like <laughs> last century doesn't seem 1900s to me. That really has, mm-hmm. and, and I see. I'm not. I'm not a rummy. I just can't. Something happened, and I just can't remember it. I'm sure you have this liquor in your history too, or something happened that and. Um, I don't know. I just can't. Uh, but I don't taste the rum in there because usually it makes me go, oh, geez. Um, but this is delicious. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you. Like my first drunk was on Navy rum when I was like 15 or something. Um, and it was not good. It was we had a, a little 40 ounce between the two of us. And it, that was it. It was no, no. The yeah. Southern comfort is like I, I just see the word Southern and comfort. And it's like no, and you uh, feel another. You feel you, neither. Yeah. You feel something that is an oxymoron of that. Yeah, it's an, it's a northern uncomfortableness that comes with the southern comfort. <laughs> yeah, and I will have I nothing, mean, I, nothing to do. I do drink rum. I have like there's a family recipe of hot buttered rum, which I make every like you know for Christmas time, and it's like a dessert drink. And I that is if you put butter and cinnamon and nutmeg and brown sugar into rum then it's delicious so i'm going to say that that's a dessert drink that could also be a breakfast drink because of what you described that was in that so that could be a breakfast (laughs) it could be a dessert drink 
or a breakfast drink. Or breakfast. You put and it I, in your cereal, you know, if you needed to. I don't, I don't know. A little honey nut Cheerios on top, man. Like for uh-huh. me. But that goes that goes with everything. That's a given. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It works with everything. In, in the chat, Tipsy Asparagus is going back to the uh, Southern Comfort and it's classified as a whiskey drink in quotes. Got it. Got it. That whiskey drink. Isn't that the part of the song? Oh, Danny boy. If I sing anymore, you're going to have to pay for it. He takes a, yeah. I, no, no one will recognize the tune. I don't think we'll get any. <laughs> any yeah, Danny we're fine. boy. We're fine. Do you, yeah, do you, that... I have a question about your, about your podcast here. Do you have <laughs> no. people who will take this 15 minutes that we have with each one and be able to fill it up with, it's a musky flavor that reminds me of oak and cork. Like, or do they go off a lot the way that we're going off, that I'm making you go off? I think most people do what we do right now, in our, on our mm-hmm. show at least. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we don't think there's any wrong answer. Like, if you taste asparagus tips and carpet, you taste that. I'm not going to, we're not going to argue. <laughs> Whereas yeah. some whiskey shows are, are, are like, well, I get something that's kind of sweet. And someone will go, oh, well, that's the vanilla notes. You're going to, it's like, no, yeah, no, don't, no. don't feed no. them. So that's, that's no. us. And no, we encourage no. people to go off on a tangent. So it's delightful that you're doing that without the encouragement, which I kind of expected <laughs> anyway. So yeah. I don't play by the rules of most podcasts. No. There so. there are no uh, rules in this podcast. So, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I think we should tell the, the, the viewers and the listeners that I asked if this is PG and you had to remind me that it's called I fucking <laughs> love whiskey. And it's like, if there's anybody that likes the word fucking more than I do, I want to meet them because I think we'd be <laughs> fucking friends. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway um yeah uh, how do you so i'm gonna uh, andrew how do you pick how do you uh, so andrew you're picking the booze or is joseph and you picking the booze well a little website called uh random.org is picking it random.org it. are they a sponsor of our show i don't know we got your number buddy random.org they're, they're not a sponsor, but I keep trying to convince them. They K&L, be- the, 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 as often as you, because in the last episode, you mentioned k a number of times. I think it's a, a great place. And the people that are really, really nice people that work there. And there's no reason why they shouldn't be giving you money and sponsoring you in some way. I think that'd be great. I, I've certainly purchased enough from them. I mean, I'd say at least <laughs> half of my cabinet is from k and <laughs> Right, um, but they they are a great a great uh, web a great place to buy booze. And David OG is super knowledgeable and and just has exposed me to so much whiskey. Yeah, it is five fourteen. So I'm going to science this because oh. uh, I know Thad oh, it's time is to not. Science. So you don't have to. No one has to. I'll, I'm I'll doing it. Bullet. I'm on doing this, it. But... Wait, I'm sorry. What's sciencing? What's what's sciencing? Just adding a little drop of water. So you should have a pipette yeah. there and just add a little. Drop oh yeah, of water. yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay, all right. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Feels it smells oh, more. It smells piney to me. It smells more like fresh pine. I get that. Or yeah, minty, like, like, like it puts it gives it kind of a piney minty nose. I kind of like what it pine. does on the nose. But it also kind of dulls it a bit. Well, it does dull it a bit, right? It's water. All right. Just a drop, right? Mm-hmm. Just a drop. You can always add more later, but we like to see what a drop does because often it can change. Oh, it's very frizzy. It's it's I frizzy. like it with a little bit of water in it. So do I. I. Like it is it. frizzy. It's like soda or something. It's got like a fizziness to it. I, I yeah. agree with David. I, I think I would say water yes with this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, I'm I'm generally a water no person, but I would say water yes in this. Yeah, me too. Do you, um, Andrew, uh, oh, I, I, well, Andrew and Joseph, um, I like to put a little cube, just a tiny, a cubelet in uh, uh like while I'm sitting watching TV and I'll have a, a, a sitting with Laura and watching TV and having a little glass. Um, I have, I like having a little cubelet of water of ice in there just cause it, it sort of like, it takes you on a little bit of a journey, mm-hmm. you know, from it being neat to adding a little bit of water. Not that it needs it, but I suppose that every booze has its own, does it need a cube in it? Yeah. And, and again, it's your whiskey. Do what you want to do. But I would say you're absolutely mm-hmm. wrong. That's a terrible way to do it. You're just on the wrong end of science on this uh, end. No. Good night, everybody. No, good night. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no. I, I will, I'm going to defend David here because he, I, no, David, you, I, mostly, again, drink, you mostly drink Irish whiskeys, right? And bourbons. Like that's kind of your, your jam, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yeah. uh, Irish whiskeys and bourbons. Okay. And, and, so, and, you know, so I yeah. would and say bourbon, those, that yeah. is that you know i like a little bit of maybe an ice cube and a bourbon because they can be quite sweet and that will kind of cut that down a bit 
A yeah. Scotch and so is bourbon, are a different 100%. story. Yeah. All right. I'll be careful next time. Yeah, no. Careful. Listen, do, do whatever you want with your whiskey. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. We, just, no, I, I we pretend like, to be assholes. I do, not, I do not feel attacked. I don't feel attacked at all. Not at all. But, you know, okay. fast forward to 45 minutes into this, and you'll see me crying. Because that's what happens. That's uh, happen. Number two. That's, We're going to move on to whiskey number two, everybody. All right. Yeah, um, sooner, sooner before, or later, you'll have to. Before we make David cry uh here it is this is uh it's from KL. oh my god an old particular blair athol a single malt 21 year old blair athol um uh, an ex-bourbon cask uh this is a refill hogshead uh distilled in 97 bottled in 2019 at 56.1 percent yowza they're a very pretty distillery very oh my god this hits you cottage. right at the it really, it really gets you right at the top. Oh, this is my favorite whiskey. I'm going to go right on the nose. <laughs> I feel like I Wait. opened a jar of hard candy and I'm smelling in a jar of hard, like hard candy. like you. Uh, But like some licorice root, not licorice itself, but just the root maybe. Yeah, sure. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, there's, there is licorice root in there. Yeah, there's like a darker, like sort of, I'm going to wait till I taste it, but then I will probably say it's my favorite whiskey at that point. That's a big thing to say. Your favorite whiskey. I'm. I'm just going to go your favorite whiskey now. Because is it really uh, your favorite whiskey? We have a. It's a category. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll give it to you. I'll give it. It's in. I love the idea that favorite whiskey is a category, not a specific favorite whiskey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, because earlier, er, early on in the in the these shows, Joseph would come to a whiskey and go, "Oh my God, this is my favorite whiskey," and it was just became all a joke. Like you've just discovered your next favorite whiskey. Okay, it's it's got to be a category. But to be fair, I fucking love whiskey, and sometimes, like frequently, when I taste a whiskey, I, I heartfelt will say, "This is my favorite whiskey." I mean, because there are so many, there are so many amazing flavors and smells in whiskey that it's like, it's like a brand new, um, I, and it is at that moment, my favorite whiskey. It's not a lot. I'm, you know? I'm going to go, because I was like, licorice, I'm a big licorice man. It, I don't smell the licorice, but when no. I drank it, it was like, oh, there's licorice. Oh, there's licorice. And I hope I'm not leading the witness in any way. I, I yeah. No, but when, when it hit me, it's like, okay, that, that is, and there's also leading the witness. You know, I'm easily talking this stuff. I think I think it's really important. So I'm a big fan of uh, the, the, the shows like Chef's Table and uh, Top Chef and the Gordon Ramsay nightmares. And I think what I learned there is take a bite of something and just let that bite live in your mouth. You know, it's kind mm -hmm. of an improv thing, like just experience that feeling that you have right now. And I think it's really like the, the temptation is to go drink it instead of going let it sit in the bath that is your skull tub mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. ideally like it it can be painful but to hold it in your mouth as long as possible really is a great it's great to do with whiskey um this by the way is that... my favorite whiskey i'm agreeing uh, this is also my favorite whiskey you know really it's, i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna up you one this is my favorite thing in the entire world wow oh. there's nothing that i enjoy more than this right now there's nothing nothing Nothing, uh, nothing. And if Laura was That's here, just... I'd go. Well, Laura's my favorite person, right? But right now, but she's not all the thing. No, she's not. No, but so hopefully she. You're in the hopefully clear. she won't watch this. Yeah, <laughs> just this. Just, this, just, this isn't going out to anybody, right? This no, is just the no, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, this, is, our, this is for us to watch later when we get old, <laughs> you know, when we're sitting we on the porch. Somewhere. Look how young and pretty we were. Look at us there. Oh. Look at that. An hour and a half ago. Were we so pretty an hour and a half ago? <laughs> What's happened in that time? Let's get together next week and watch this again. Huh? <laughs> I do love oh that God. there's a there's a sweetness here, but also a savoriness like there's both of those things are going on in here that's one of the things i that i really like about her the, and this on the fights, show, if you hold it in your mouth it's fighting to get out sorry go yeah ahead. yeah yeah it's, it's fighting to get out um in the in the uh, in the episode that i watched the last episode that i watched um your guest said what would i pair this with and i thought that was such an interesting concept to pair a whiskey with something um because it's not something that you would have at the dinner table table is that if you want you can 
if you want, you can. But when I think about whiskey, I think about, let's just sit around the hearth and watch the fake fire. Or let's just watch TV instead of like, can you pass the noodle casserole? This is really good whiskey. Um, I don't know I would never I would I would not have it that way. Not to argue it. It's like that was a cool thing to think about. Well, I, yeah, mm -hmm. and we would generally agree with you. I think because I don't want to like. Well, once again, we fucking love whiskey. I don't want to like have something with a strong flavor to it. You know, if I'm gonna have anything with whiskey, it might be like crackers or something that just to kind of clear the palate a bit. You know, but right. And I think it's also uh, so. I was a cigarette smoker. Were you two either of you cigarette smokers? Yeah. Yeah. I. I. But not anymore, Andrew. Right? No. No. Yeah, I, sm I smoked for 30 years and mm. uh, I quit maybe 15 years ago, something like that. And it's amazing, like the taste that you have now. And um, I know a sommelier that's a smoker. And I'm like, how are you a sommelier? And, and he's a great sommelier. One of the preeminent whiskey experts in the world, Charlie McLean, smokes. And I it just floors me every time I see him doing it. Um, yeah, I Who think knows? it's like it's, it's it's like they have a mutant power and their sense of smell and taste is so acute that they have to put on like headphones because otherwise they'll it'll be a headache all the time. Right. That's my. Yeah. Point. Yeah. And I also want to say, like, imagine this. Imagine the three of us sitting around like like smoking. Going, I don't know. Maybe it's good. There's something really kind of sexy about it. Like, I don't know. I'm going to go later on. We'll maybe later on we'll go to watch the horse races. Well, we can go down there now. I know the guy got the key to the horse race. And nowadays, even you sell this. cigarettes at the back. <laughs> yeah, that just yeah. doing so that is a this. visceral. You can feel it. Yeah, you can feel it, right? Uh, Laura, Laura's, uh, uh, Laura is a uh, microphone. I'm just going to say it once, and then we're done. Laura is an <laughs> opera singer, and she had to hold oh. like she she had to have a a cigarette during a show. And I'm like, she asked me how to hold a cigarette because I can watch people on television shows and go that person. Never, never smoked, smoked a cigarette yeah. in their life. Never yeah. smoked a cigarette in their life. I think for me, it's if you don't do this, if you do this, then you're not a real smoker. If you do this, you're a smoker. I'm just yeah, saying. That's this. Yeah, that's it. That's it, right? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And the casual and, flick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when I was at Second City, it's really weird. When I was on the main, when I was at Second City, throughout all the time I was in Second City, I could smoke on stage. Uh -huh. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's smoke part of the show. During the show. That's part of the show. Like all my characters smoked. And when one of my characters, <laughs> when I quit smoking, all my characters had to quit smoking. It was like, no. And some of them were probably pretty cranky about it. Oh, oh yeah. Well, they all started cranky. <laughs> all of them are cranky all about it. <laughs> all of our kind of, all Dave Rizowski characters are cranky. That's my, I, my oh, character. That's true. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, that that changes things. Okay. That's my character. That's my character. Uh, uh, Master class. Be cranky. <laughs> For me, when I quit, I remember being like dreaming that I was smoking and I wake up going, oh, fuck, I cheated. No, I didn't. I didn't. And then just crying for no reason. Like I'd just be watching a dog food commercial like, oh, my God, that man loves his dog. And just <laughs> emotion, my emotions were fucking up. Yeah. Uh, I, I quit. And now here we are in the middle of the Screen Actors Guild uh, after SAG after uh, uh, um, strike. But SAG had a smoking cessation program. And that helped me quit where I met a woman. Awesome. I met a woman once a week and she was like a therapist for me once a week for nine weeks. And she was my therapist and she helped me quit smoking. I would not be able to, I would, I would not. Oh, we're doing the water thing. We're I'm doing not, science. I'm going to wait to see what Andrew says. Cause I don't, I, I, cause it's YouTube, pretty David, damn good without. Yeah. The water. I mean, you don't have to put water in. Don't feel like you have to. Well, how many times am I going to be on the show? I got to be on that. I mean, we'll have you back if you want. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I guess, well, you know. no, let's see. Let's see how he does I'm, on the first. The oh, let's, yeah. <laughs> let's get to the end of the show. Let's, yeah, see, let's, let's see, see what, what the we'll numbers, see. what do the numbers look, look like? Whether yeah. oh, we like you, Dave, but you know what? That woman who was on it, three weeks ago. It, de know? it depends on if your crying is compelling or not. That's, <laughs> that's the factor. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I told you that. Somebody asked me to do a podcast called Drunk Monk. And Drunk Monk is this. You watch an episode of Monk. And then you go over and do a podcast and you drink. And I drank too much. And I was crying at the end of the episode. And Laura had to come by and mop me up and take me home. And so this is not going to end that way. I'm telling you right now.
Let's hope not. Let's so we've, we've Andrew, never what had do you a think? guest cry. I get I get mm. a little bit of man, mandarin orange in the nose with the water, which is very Jeez, weird. you have a no, no, I love your uh your yeah. imagination. Oh my god, that smells so no, I, 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 I wish get it, I, I wish get Thad, it now without the water. I can get it now without I wish the water. Thad was tasting with us because Thad just really nails the the various flavors so well. Yeah. Um Thanks, Thaddeus. <laughs> thanks for being dry today, Thad. Jeez, of all the sober days, not when Rosowski's here. You know, I do what I do when I can do what I do. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a Dave statement. You do what also, you do when you do what you do. It was Thad's birthday yesterday, so happy birthday, Thad. Happy oh, Thad's happy birthday. birthday, Thad. Happy Thad's birthday. Um, so Andrew, water or no water? Um, I I yeah, the, the the flavor, I would say no. The nose interesting mm. with that 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 mm. citrus boosted, but the the mouth, I I don't yeah. I really like the flavor of this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on the water. I, I would pass on the water. I would pass on the water. This has a lot of levels going on. Like there this is an adventure. This is an adventure. Uh um because it changes with the with how, how like it starts out one way and then you taste something and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper there's a lot going on here i think this is terrific it's my favorite thing in the whole world uh better than that's kittens and i do that's kittens. fantastic um this is one of diageo's distilleries and it is a big component of johnny walker um oh. I think more than, um not not one of the premier ones like colila uh, or um uh the one up north uh, or the one out west uh I, what whatever. do you mean when you um, say uh, I, uh, what do you mean when you say the Johnny Walker? Like what 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 do you what do you what the heck are you talking about? What the like, heck what am I mean? saying? Well, what the Diageo heck are you is, is is a big conglomerate. It owns like twenty. Uh, Thad will correct me. Twenty one, nineteen distilleries, and it takes bits. Uh, it takes casks from each distillery, and it says, "I want you to give me the sweet." smoky profile or the sweets profile i want to give you the smoky profile i want to give you to give me the kind of heathery profile and so those distilleries just churn out that component of it and then the master uh dis master distiller what's his, what's he called uh that will correct me again um comes in and uh will blend the whiskey saying you know 12 casks of that eight casks of that put it together and that becomes johnny walker blue and they'll say like 10 casks of that eight casks of that that becomes johnny walker red so they're trying to create a flavor profile that's the same every single time. So when you get a Johnny Walker Blue, you know exactly the flavor you're getting. The reason that that Joseph and I love these independent bottlers is that you get a single cask from a single distillery and you get something weird and wonderful and wild. And you could also maybe explore what the what the uh, the flavor profile of a particular distillery is. So mm -hmm. yeah, Johnny mm -hmm. Walker is like, this doesn't fit with our McDonald's. Not that Johnny Walker is McDonald's, but it's like, it has to be, it has to be the same every time. This For doesn't sure. fit with it. So go do that. And we're like, yes, we'll taste that interesting flavor that's outside of your circle, you know? Of course, of course, of course. I think that's all that's really awesome. Um, so when you do so everybody watching this right now is getting this information that we're gonna be drinking these four boozes this entire time. <laughs> they don't know ahead of time what it is that you got, right? Well, you know, we we announced like three days before, like yeah, it's in, the, oh, you do. it's in the social media. We sent it out on Wednesday. Yeah. So what but, what I'm saying is, if somebody wanted to, they could play the home game version. If if they were a crazy collector like me, because a lot of these things are single casks, and there's like 180 right. bottles of them in the world, and if got you got it, it while well, KNL had it, you got it, and if you don't, well, too bad. Okay, so, they're I'm not just... they're not expensive, but when like at this point, you can't get them anymore because there's a limited amount of them. Right. Got it. Got it. Uh, it's right, just like, for me. Sorry. Yeah. One of 232 bottles they got out of this cast. Oh my God. It's so good. That is so good. It's my favorite thing ever. We should stop the show now. I don't know why we're even drinking. But, and that. yet we have well, two more whiskeys. In fact, we have to I know. Down to the I know. Next well, I know. I, I guess know. I know. David's saying he doesn't want to do it. All right. Our, our third one, <laughs> also an old particular from KNL, Glenn Goyne. Glenn Goyne? Goyne? Glenn Goyne. Glenn Goyne. Uh, Glenn Groin, as as David was saying earlier, uh, eleven year old. This is a uh, an eleven year old groin. Eleven year old, even though it says sixteen year old on the chart, I think oh, I picked God. the wrong bottle. Oh well, you know it's eleven year old. Hog Hogshead cast. Let me just verify that I picked the wrong the right thing here. No, this is a PX Sherry Butt cask. So the the information on the bottle is completely wrong that you have. Yeah, as soon this as, as I smelled I it, as soon as I smelled it, I was like, this is a Sherry cask. So. 
Sorry, Thaddeus. This is one of 425 bottles from a PX Sherry Butt, uh, Pedro Eminez. Well, are you um, saying Sherry Butt? Are you saying Butt? I'm saying Butt, B-U-T-T, Butt. B -U -T -T, butt. Did okay. you know that a butt a butt load is actually a, a real measurement? It's four sherry butts. That's I'll a go butt you load. a butt load, but you know what? It's different than a shit load. A shit load is very different. Yeah. Don't want a shit load. I'd take a butt load. <laughs> <laughs> that's, where, that's where I am personally. Okay. Yeah, no, I hear that. God, it's it really tastes good. This could be my favorite ever of anything. This, oh, gonna, this is this is absolutely my favorite based on the nose. I can say that right now. This that, is like a, and again. Caramel. It's so I think what did you say? Terrible. Caramel. 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 Oh my God! I just caramel. Like, terrible. terrible. This is terrible. Oh, this, this is David, this very, is just terrible. A very special. I fucking love whiskey. This is terrible. <laughs> oh my God! This is so delicious. This is like I'll I'll smell this for a bit. Yeah, yeah. I think this that's really is, important. You can sit in well. those here. Uh, when I was when I when I was married, uh, somebody bought us a bunch of these uh, little glasses, like you know, to like little tiny glasses to drink booze out of, and um, no, because my nose is so big, I couldn't like we had, return, we had to return we had to return we had to return them because they weren't working with uh, the physiognomy. Uh -huh. uh -huh. like, yeah. This really smells so good. Is it? This is oh. candy. This is just candy. It's crazy how good this smells. But it's like rich, creamy candy. It's like it's like uh, almond roca that hasn't hardened yet, or like you know caramel, or like, oh my uh, god, fudge. It's like it's like it's in the process of being like in the pan, and they have and they're like heating it slowly. That's that's kind of what it reminds me of. What were you saying about sherry? Like, what did you say about cherry? It's a uh, sherry cask. We, it's a sherry cask. You could yeah. really tell the sherry cask. Yeah. Which I, who I went to Hebrew school with, sherry cask, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Hebrew school. Miss Cass, Miss Cass, Miss Cass, Miss Cass. Yeah, calm down, calm down, Miss Cass. Calm down, calm down, Sherry. Calm down. And oh, God, keep your button control. <laughs> I'm. I like the the smell yeah. of this is delicious. It is. Yeah. This is the this is the best dessert I've ever had in the nose. It really, really is. Like I'm almost, I almost don't want to taste it because I feel like it could go another direction, you know. But I'm still, I'm, I, I know I'm gonna like it, but you never know. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna, okay. Be, okay. You're gonna be okay. We're here right. with. You. I, I am. We're here with you. Justin. I'm embarrassed here, though because this is the first time I've made such a bad mistake in putting the wrong whiskey on the sheet. What are you showing? What are you showing us on that sheet? What is that? Oh, that I can't that's say. just from my from my database. Oh, Random.org. Okay. Pick these four whiskeys for us, and uh -huh. I it. It said, "Oh, go pull the twenty-one-year-old old particular Belair Athol, and I or Glenn Goyne, uh, the sixteen-year-old Glenn Goyne, and I picked an eleven-year-old Glenn Goyne. Like I picked totally the wrong bottle, but I've got so many, you can understand why." I, I have to tell you now. I have to do another episode that isn't spoiled because you know this one because of that ruined it's spoiled. It's, it's ruined, ruined for me. You. Dear diary. Um, <laughs> But the I smell guess of this if we have was... to have you if we have to have on the, you on the show again, David. I guess we have to because I don't want you to. I need to have the right experience. Yeah. You know, no, if anybody's going to be reading my diary. They're going to go. That was a tough day for Dave. Yeah, that poor was Dave. A tough day for he Dave. really suffered. He suffered. Oh my god! And you know smell... what? Next next episode, I'm just going to pull them randomly and not even tell anybody what they are. No, and get them all no. wrong. How's that? No. God, I'm with you. Uh, uh, it, like, Joseph, it really is like one of these things where you go, I cannot stop smelling this. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a little in in uh, Edinburgh, but if you have never been to Edinburgh, if you've never been to Edinburgh, don't go because nobody needs to have you there. No. Um, what? There's a Wait. little place called the Whiskey Room. I don't know if you've ever been to the Whiskey Room in Edinburgh. It's just, it's maybe as big as right here. There's nothing going on. And you just sit there and it's quiet and there's a fireplace and they give you a little flight if you want of three or four whiskeys to try. And Edinburgh, Scotland is heaven on earth. It is probably one of the best cities. And if you like whiskey, you've got to go there. 
And so you've been there three or four, four or five times. Have you been on that the whiskey museum they have there? The Scotch malt yes. whiskey experience. It's so we stupid. Have. It's Both so of us stupid. have. It's so stupid. It's so and yet, stupid. It's stupid, but so I love great. it. I love it so, so much. Great at the same you time. get you get in the whiskey barrel, and then the ghost <laughs> tells in your whiskey. You turn it into whiskey during the journey. I love it. I love it. I'm sure you've talked about it before, but it's like it was one yeah. of the things. Where my wife and I went. It was like. What? What is happening? You're like, this can't be real. This can't. This what's happening? <laughs> yeah. If there's no, a Disneyland no. of whiskey, that's it. That's it really, Disney, really, it does seem land. like it, it's a drunk world after all. And it was just, <laughs> it was so, it's so much fun to go there, and it's so celebrated. And are you haggis eaters? Do you enjoy the haggis? I had haggis for the first time when I was in Edinburgh, and it was I love amazing. It. But it was, like it. A fa- it was like a fancy restaurant and it was like a very, it was like a fancy version of Haggis. But, but you know, I, they're all- I loved it. It was, it was great. Yeah. Andrew, what, Andrew, come on now. Get on the Haggis train, man. I'm, I'm a vegetarian. So. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, but they have, they have a vegan they Haggis. Have veggie, I went to, they do. And I've had it and it's really, I've had really that. good. I don't consider that really? Haggis. So I, I didn't want to say no, yes. I've no, no, haggis. no, 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 no. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right, right. This is this is a different conversation for a different podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's for I really love vegan food. That's that's this that is one. this is my favorite whiskey. Where you don't even swear, you just go. I really love vegan <laughs> food. And it's like because vegans don't swear, don't swear. No, no, uh, they they fart a lot though. They fart a lot though. I know that. Um, this but, is so uh, fucking good, you guys. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Oh my god. Yeah. I feel. I feel sorry for people watching this unless you have this in front of you. You know, I don't know that we're doing due diligence for you to really experience what it is that it's tasting like, because it really, it almost tastes like a solid. There's something really quite delicious about it. Yeah. Very chewy. Yeah, I'd go with that. It's really chewy. It really is chewy. It's like caramel, but like there's something in the caramel, like a dried fruit or like some sort of something tart almost, you know, like it's, it's got more than just that caramel note, you know? When you when we first uh, opened this thing and we were first drinking, you said caramel, and I'm like, that's exactly it. It does have that caramel ca- uh, caramel flavor to it. It's really quite and delicious. a lot of a lot of times whiskey will have a little bit of that note, but not just like it, that was almost exclusively like I just opened a, a a big flat piece of caramel, broken it open, getting that big nose full. Oh, mm, it's so really good. delicious. It's really really delicious. Um, just for uh, what would you say? would be if you're going to sit with a bunch of friends and, and drink any of these um what might be the nosh that you would have with it like we talked about crackers what 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 might you add to that 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 um like a nosh thing cheese i don't know that you'd want cheese because no, cheese might know. because cheese might cheese might mushy up you know would be too much zhuzh for your tongue and mm-hmm. make you not appreciate it um, anything spicy the same thing it might burn the tongue a little bit and then you can't really right. access the flavors i right. for me like peanuts and pretzels and just very neutral yeah, kind of that. foods is what i would pair now uh, you yeah. said that it was kind of odd to have a whiskey pairing with with uh food um with a dinner SMW, with a dinner with dinner but there are people smws the scotch malt whiskey society has restaurants um now in uh edinburgh and glasgow uh where you can have a pairing of whiskey with like a five course meal and that and and some of our guests have been foodies and have said oh this would go well with this i don't i can't do that i don't it doesn't even make sense to me but there's oh, a path. and I, I i just want to make a point here uh point of order um point of order <laughs> the chair recognizes uh, david thank you very much andrew uh point of order i will uh, uh give myself my five minutes um i am not saying no i'm saying turn me on to how to do it and I will do it. Um, right. And I, I can't is, guide you down that path. I, I, so you said in Edinburgh, there's a, there's a, there's a restaurant that does that. Is that what you're saying? Did I get that right? Yes. I would yes. love to know what that restaurant is. It's the Scotch um, Malt Whiskey Society. So you have to be a member to get in there. It's on Queen street. Oh. It's, it's, um, but it is, Oh my God. It's my, it's, you know, my favorite places on the earth. It's one of my favorite places on earth. Yeah, we have a lot of SMWS whiskeys on the show, David. We don't today, but they're they're an independent bottler. Like the ones right, the ones that Andrew's pointing at, that whole shelf. Like, well, not that whole shelf, but the, they have 
These like, ones, yeah, I don't know if I have one. Those, those ones, here. those ones down there. Some up, know, there's but... some up there. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. They, I'll take but they, for it. they do. It's all like single cask, mm -hmm. and the stuff they do is is wow. like it's all it's all really interesting. Like this, it's you know. I, Andrew, how are you going to get that to New York? Am I? Am, I don't I know yet. Much? I don't know I how you're going to get that. Like, it's how okay. Do you get... He's going to, he could just store it at my place. And then like over time, <laughs> you know, it can go to New York. I've, I've offered that. I have plenty of room here. You're very, you're a good man. You're yeah. good I've got a lot Joseph. of friends that are, yeah. Yeah. Very, very yeah. You got to, you yeah. got to get rid of that, 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 is it a lion and a beer behind you? Uh, is that what that is? Me? The, this... Yeah. Oh yeah. His cat drinking whiskey. Yeah. It's a cat, oh, glass. It's a cat drinking whiskey. Oh, oh. Uh, would you move your head so I can see the cat drinking whiskey? I love that so much. Damn it, I want that in my house. Um, because when you told me that you were moving, I'm like, how do you move all those? Because some of those are open, right? Yeah. Oh, most of them are open. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Because yeah. of the Rob show. Might. Because of the show. Yeah. I it's do because... see David. I will say there's a cat. Just to segue, you do have a cat, or to, you have a cat behind you. So I did. See yeah, it was walking walk. around. I saw it. I saw it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I got two. We we have two cats, and they're both. Um, they're both hungry. <laughs> ah, normally, well. you, know, you know what? I'm in charge. Uh, they're not in yeah. charge. As you should they're be. They're in charge. They're in charge. <laughs> Call the police. I have... <laughs> uh, um, but I, 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 I don't know. How often do you talk about Edinburgh? Because I've, I got a feeling, like for me, it's like I would not, if I was on the show every week, there would not be a week I would not talk about Edinburgh. It's... Or Scotland. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing geological city. Uh, mm. We talk about um, Scotland a lot because we mostly drink scotch. So we definitely talk about right. the distilleries in Scotland and the places in Scotland. I love, I love when I was in Edinburgh, I did notice like, I was like, oh, this is clearly where, you know, uh, JK Rowling is from because it's, it looks like the Harry Potter movies. Like it looked like they have a lot of Harry Potter stores there, but it looks like the architecture and everything looks like, uh, like you know diagon alley or whatever like all of it right you know, so. uh, uh one of the one of the world's greatest improvisers uh, uh certainly the guy that he can imp he can he can he's a rap improv in a way that you've never seen anybody look up will nama n-a-a-m-a-h will nama runs does a uh a harry he he among other things that he does which is phenomenal like he does uh a, a jk rot he does harry potter tours there but um, he's one of the greatest improvisers on the planet. Um, and he's, in, he does, he's an Englishman who lives in Scotland. Uh, and Edinburgh, pardon me. I love, he's, I love that you say like the greatest improvisers because I swear we could like, me and you could like swap names of the greatest improvisers. And no one, and, and, but I feel like no one would have heard about them. Like no, no the, but, I, for me, the greatest improvisers are not famous or wealthy or rich. It's like, it's like, no, it's some guy in Atlanta who like will fucking blow your socks off, but he's never going to be- you. You know, no, but Will Nauman needs to be famous. Will Nauman needs to be everybody should they know the should name of this person. They should all be famous. They should all no, be famous. Yeah, they're, they're should. they should. They should. They should. But I also believe that when you watch this fucker improvise, you're like, he's on another fucking planet. Like, like look up, y'all, right now, when you're done, not now, but when you're done with this, look right. up Will Nama on YouTube and watch this guy improvise rap, and you will be blown away. Right. You'll be blown away. Uh, and we did have, we did have whiskey and a uh, haggis together, but anyway, nice. I don't know how I got in. As you should, as you should, as you as should, you should. As as you should. Um, well, cause you were talking about like how often we talk about Edinburgh. I mean, like it is, yeah, it's, it is all that we've all been there. We all loved it. Uh, we recommend it to everyone. Um, also, right, you know what, talking about it. David, I don't Science. know if I mentioned this earlier and I really apologize for it's an oversight. If I didn't, I fucking love whiskey. I got to make a note of this. Hold on. I should have okay. known that. You shouldn't have told me that. Should, 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 yeah. Yeah. Write I, that I, down I like with that. What is clearly a space pen and an actual piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that. Oh, that's sticky note on the monitor. I nice. can't see sticky David. He put a sticky note over the <laughs> camera. I can't see him. Where is he? Do, do you think that people uh, will watch your, watch this awesome podcast and just fast forward through uh, how many minutes are we fast forward through a certain amount of time to go, let's watch it when they're more loaded. Than they I, are. I really yeah. hope so. I mean, Pe Pez <laughs> reviews, I, I don't know when Pez reviews joined, but recently Pez <laughs> reviews just joined. Hi Pez reviews. How's it going? 
I think I think he joins us late just to see the last whiskey because I think Pez was reviews good. was uh, had mentioned had been mentioned on the episode that I watched. So Pez oh, reviews because yeah, I think they were like yeah. on the next week or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Hi, Pez Reviews. Good to meet you. He's he's doing a great thing now. He's got his whiskey wheel out. Um, so he's got his random thing and he's like just sampling things, you know, when it comes up on the wheel, which I'd love. I'm gonna I, I hate to be the person who does this, but it is five forty-six, so we do have to move forward. We haven't uh, science. Are we, science yet, are we, we science? We should now? we should science really quick, I guess. Remember oh yeah, go go ahead and science. I, I don't have that option. This was so good. I'm sorry. This is like the best thing I've ever had in the entire. And Miss Sim, I'm sorry you're watching every pedantic second. <laughs> <laughs> We're really sorry. <laughs> I think water might. It, I don't know. I. I. I there's an don't, argument. Don't to be say had it's for better. It. Oh, I'm not saying it's I'm better, but it's, it. it, it's interesting. It's one of those ones where you put water in it, and it feels like there's more alcohol. Like it burns more. Oh. On in the mouth, okay. but I I do like it. But that's just a. We got to move forward, so let's go to the Highland Park. Uh, yeah, I do as, wanna, as... like, but let's take a look at this before we do anything. Where it's like, yeah. look how rich and caramely looking that look is. Look how dark you that know. sucker is. There, it's really, really good. It's really dark. It's the darkest. Pest reviews. Old. Yeah, we are having some great whiskeys here. Uh, this is a sixteen-year-old. No, this is not. This is a ten-year-old cask strength refill sherry hogshead distilled 2018, Jeez, 2008, uh, filled into the bottle twenty nineteen. Um, from Orkney refill sh uh, sherry hogshead. Yeah, very nice. How long dark. was it? How long was it? Did it sit in the hogshead? Uh, ten years, probably ten years, ten years and change. In a in a hogshead inside in a the hogshead. head of a hog. Yeah, inside and the, the head of a alive. hog. It's it still alive. that the is, is still that alive. is the most remarkable thing. Like that is a miracle yeah. of science. People don't understand how yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah, that's the crossover of of a religion and science. It's a miracle of science. Silence, yeah. silence. This is very pedantic. I'm going to taste, I'm tasting a pedantic. It's smelling pedantic right now. To me, this nose like hits, like I like there, I just feel like there's so much going on, but it's like a bunch <gasps> of different flavors. Yeah. <coughs> oh, no. oh, no. oh, geez, oh, no. oh no. Jeez, 61%. You okay? 61%. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I am fine. I am fine. I am fine. Can, can, I'm just going to guess this is David's favorite whiskey right now, just based on his uh, Merv reaction there. It's a Merv. There's a Merv. Merv. No, there's not a Merv. Yeah. There has not oh been one where there's been a Merv. There's no Merv. Okay, good. If you but weren't talking about that minutia, why would you be here, right? Well, yeah, that's true. Good point. We're talking about a lot of stuff, though. It's not just about whiskey. We talk about How are you able to see what people are saying? I just don't have the technology, do I? Oh, just I have have we've got the Twitch window. up in a separate window. window. Doesn't matter, doesn't yeah. matter, doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll if someone you, says anything yeah. bad about you, we, we won't tell you. We won't tell you. Oh, you know what? They say something good, will. What other people think of me is none of my business. <laughs> oh my god, this smells so good. There, this this really smells like a solid. Like like there's something yeah. substantial going on here. It does. It's like it's like that Willy Wonka gum. That's a full meal, but it just goes up your nose. Like an entire meal is going up your nose. I haven't even tasted it yet, and I feel like smelling it a sniff is like a seven course meal. I know you didn't say get political, but I think this Timothy Chalamet Wonka thing might not be the thing that I'm going to watch. Okay, fair enough. Whoa, fair whoa, enough. calm down. That's don't have I think, such. I know, a I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And and my friend, uh, my friend, name drop. Here's the name drop. Uh, my friend uh, Keegan Michael Key is on that, and I'm like Keegan, I love you very much. He doesn't watch the show. Don't, you don't. You don't have to butter him up. You don't know that. You, you don't know, know that. that. You don't, don't know that. that. You don't know that. Know. You don't know that. You hey, don't know that. If he if he does he drink whiskey? Would he be on the show? Miss Sim, would I'm you be on the show? Miss Sim. Like I've tried to get Miss Sim, Sim on the show. She won't do it. Oh. Don't stop trying. <laughs> she says F God. that hot Wonka though. <laughs> I think I think what's really important. <laughs> I think the, the Wonka doesn't bother me so much as as the Hugh Grant as the Oompa Loompa. Like that was the thing I was like, Ugh. oh. Uh, Hugh, Hugh needs some money badly lately. I think that's what that's what we're seeing. Why well, he did the Dungeons and Dragons movie? You telling me they didn't shoot a fire hose of money at him for that? Come on! I loved that movie. I so did, did not I. want to like that movie. And he was I, I didn't want to like it. I'm, yeah. I'm being. I careful watched here it on the plane from I know, New York last night. Did you like it or no? I, I kind of it. liked it. I was. It won me over. Did you kind of like it or did you like it? I liked it. Fuck off. All right. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> We know we're deep into the into the uh, the episode where he's like, "Fuck off." 
the fuck off thing oh. would not have come at the beginning. So, uh, David, do you have do you have something to say here, or I've got a question for you? No, I never have anything to say. Okay, so uh, you teased before we started when we were talking about the order. You mm. said, "Hey, Highland Park, that's a region of Chicago where I was a houseboy," and we were like, "So many questions, so many questions." Uh, and, uh, I was a houseboy. Uh, so uh, my dad got me a job. His friends, uh, I'm going to say their name. Fred and Deborah Annis, who are no longer uh, married, uh, they owned a mansion in Highland Park, Illinois, uh, which is a lovely train ride outside of Chicago. And uh, I was hired in to be the houseboy of their Highland Park mansion, which meant for a summer, I would rake leaves and paint and do construction work and all that. And um and get called uh, into the mar- matrimonial bedroom when Miss Innes was alone. All that I'm going to say is what what goes on in Highland Park stays in Highland Park. Okay. Uh, although, get me have me a couple more of these, and that rule doesn't apply anymore. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, the thing that you do when you're young to make a living, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, I had a job where uh, it was called a courier, and it was before I was hired. Uh, at the second city in the touring company and a courier is uh i would go to uh clinics medical doctor doctor's offices hospitals and pick up anything that oozed out of your body in a and and put into into like a, a, a vial or something and then brought back to this clinic to be tested and that was my job <laughs> and i had that for a year and a half and i gotta be honest it was a great job it was a great, great job because I could get high and drive and listen to music right. and go to auditions. And this is 1981, 82, back in the days. Um, uh, back when, when they... ooze was big business. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Did you say back when ooze was big ooze, business? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's right. yeah. Ooze was yeah, big yeah. business. If you, then, yeah. yeah, if you were if you were in the ooze game, you were really yeah. making some scratch. That, was, you were, that, was, gonna... that was before the ooze bubble burst. I mean, yeah. the, 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 everything you know? everything we're talking about now i just want to say everything we're talking about now has never been spoken in this way ever in the history of of the of, of culture like the ooze game and the ooze bubble that's wow. never been said I'm pretty sure pretty sure it's in a shakespeare play david i'm pretty sure <laughs> i'm pretty sure this is all in merchant of venice if yeah. i if i recall if i'm recalling correctly yeah yeah you're right didn't, you're right you're right i should he actually that. derived the word ooze didn't shakespeare yeah, do he that? made he it did. up yeah he, he, invented he, it. he yeah. said he said ooze bubble before anybody else said ooze bubble and he also uh, burst that bubble he did. before yeah yeah, yeah. He, he, did. Burst yeah. Ooze bubble. he burst that ooze bubble he burst that so again fast forward to this point in every episode and you will be entertained yeah, <laughs> we were entertaining previously. Yeah, I it's feel, a different kind of entertainment. I, I feel you're like right, you, can, right, you should right. watch the whole thing and amp up. You're you right. Know? I you're think. right. You're I right. Know. Yeah, yeah. Now watch, watch how we get to this point, but also play the home game version. So you're at the same level that we're yes. at by the time. Oh, we're here. we always encourage people to play the home game, and we always want to know what they're drinking in the chat, and no one ever yeah. tells us. I just have a question. Do you, like, have you ever asked somebody to do this, and they went, "I'm sober"? Yeah. Sure. Okay, great. Uh, I just want to know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, yeah. Okay, someone great. told us told us they weren't drinking now. Yeah, I, I As, yeah. Also, uh-huh. people have transitioned to being sober. A lot of people have transitioned to being sober, and and I totally okay. support that. I think I understand yeah. it. And I, oh, I, I'm 100 you know, with it. Great. I just want to yeah. know. For me, I just like these are questions that I have that I had when uh, when you you asked me, and I was like, when I've had a couple of these, I will ask that question. Um, right. And by the yeah. way, this is my favorite. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, we haven't talked going a lot on. about this whiskey. Yeah, so let's. let's <laughs> no, let's that, I wanted to bring us back. It's a bit of an enigma to me because I feel like there's so much going on in here that it's hard to like. It's hard to pull out specific notes. Like I feel like it is a seven course meal with the dessert what? and the appetizer and all of it. You know. So so here's here's a layperson's question. Like, why is this darker than the others? It would be the sherry cask and how recently it's had sherry in it. So mm-hmm. a lot of the coloration does come from the contents of the, the, the cask held previously. But so, they will use so it multiple rum- times. So they fill it with sherry. Uh, so they age the sherry in it. And then they, they sell the sherry cask off to the scotch producers. They'll first fill it when it was just 
um, out of the cask, out of the sherry production line, and it will take on a lot of color. And then they'll do a second fill of that cask and it'll get less of that. And they generally don't do a third fill. Some distilleries will try and pull it for a third fill. But by the time you've done three fills, you know, the sherry, the whiskey, the whiskey, the cask is kind of spent in, in what it's going to do to the whiskey to kind of mellow it, to add the... Uh, yeah, if I just smelled this and then tasted it, I, like off the top of my head, I wouldn't say it's a sherry cask. I don't think I would have gotten that immediately because there's so much other savory stuff going on here. But then the, uh, the but looking at it, I would guess it was a sherry cask. Right, it really looks like... Sh like so the cask can affect the coloration of it the coloration and also the the flavor like the the, the reason the getting flavor. Kind of these <laughs> these, yeah. these nicer nicer notes are because of the cask but the, the even even if it's just like um uh, toasted oak which is what you get in bourbon casks um without any other fluid being influencing it you still get like vanilla notes that come into it you get all these these beautiful um softening um, chemical reactions that are happening, these inner, these organic processes that are happening when the wood and the alcohol kind of like continually kind of breathe in and breathe out as the as the wood heats and, and cools. Um, it's just amazing what it does to this this raw alcohol from from barley. What what gets me is like how many times you you hear somebody say vanilla notes of vanilla and there's just no vanilla in there. It's just yeah, the notes yeah. of vanilla. Like what is it about vanilla? It's like it's insidious. Like it kind of finds its stupid it, white way into everything. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's the American oak. And when it's toasted, it, it gives you that kind of vanilla flavor, that vanilla like note. It's, it's obviously not vanilla, but that's the thing that gives you that feeling of vanilla in your mouth. And that sounded um, really wrong. No, not at all. Not at all. If, if it's wrong, then that's the people bringing it to it. Like they're wrong. There's something okay. wrong with them. Um, Thank you, Do David. you ever... I'm here for you. Do you ever, do you ever like look at these and go an ice cube would be, I know I mentioned this before, but the idea of like popping an ice cube or don't you, or do you always need it? N-E-N-E-A-T, neat. I, I, I would always start with the whiskey neat just to see what it brings. And sometimes, mm -hmm. and Joseph will, it says this sometimes too, where it's like this whiskey feels tight and we think the water is going to open it up a bit, but then you start with just a drop because uh, even with a drop of water, what we found is sometimes it can open up flavors, but sometimes it opens flavors that you go, oh, I'm not happier with that flavor uh, in that uh, whiskey. Uh -huh. And if you just drop your ice cube in there, you have an uncontrolled experiment going on. It's just adding more and more water. You're probably exposing more and more of those flavors. And if you don't like those flavors, well, too bad. You can't take it out. Yeah. So It's right. kind of like why, why we right. call it science. Like it's not just the eyedropper. It's the fact that we put one drop in and then see what it does. And then you can put more in if you want. You know, it's right. It's you know, right. I, I'm for me. Uh, I'm an, I'm not a big cocktail drinker. I, I like I, I go beer. I'll have vodka on the rocks, no fruit, um, or I'll have a whiskey neat or whiskey with one rock. Um, but I had something this year that I never had before, and it's called a gimlet, oh. and okay. it was stupid delicious. But I also felt like if I have two of these. I am not going to be able to have a conversation with you. It would and I just think that be stupid. Yeah. It would just be stupid. And I think that that's really something that we have to look at when it comes to drinking this sort of thing to go. Part of the experience of, 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 of drinking the whiskey is conversation and not yes. to get loaded. Like, yeah. I don't like, yes. like, so I think that that's really an important thing. And, and uh, I haven't watched enough of your episodes to go, how do you measure this out? But the idea of, I'm just going to drink it because for me having whiskey with somebody and all of, and, and like, we're all, like the three of us starting drinking whiskey at the same level, like we're sober and then we have whiskey and then we have another one. Then we have another one. We're all at the same level. So we all have a level of that conversation, but um, it's different than we're just going to get loaded. And I yeah. think that the older that you get, or uh, the, the older that you get, the more sophisticated that you get or the, the, whatever you realize you know, sometimes booze is just about tasting what it is that you have in front of you. And your entire podcast is really about that in a way. Yeah, man. Uh, not yeah. in a way. Yeah. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes, you get it. You totally it's, get it. Yeah. Whiskey is better shared. I, I have all this stuff here. If I have a whiskey on a Tuesday night, I want to have something that I've had before, something that's kind of nondescript. And I'll just have a little drama of that. Because I can't just turn to someone and suddenly go like, 
Oh my God, are you getting the kind of citrus red <laughs> asparagus <laughs> carpet notes that I am? Are you getting this? Like that's that's part of the fun. It's kind of right. why we started doing the show is so we could have these conversations, so we could taste these whiskeys with someone else because it's pointless to do it by yourself. It's pointless. I think it's great. I think it's great. How different would this be if I was like, because uh, one of the reasons I think the, the, the viewers watchers should know this, that one of the reasons that uh, uh, that I didn't, that we were doing this zoom is is um, when I first came up here, I got a DUI and it's like, I fucking don't want another DUI. So yeah, how different would this, how different would this be if I was with you, as opposed to what we're doing now, we started doing it in person. Originally, we did it in person at first, and uh, there is there was there, I I kind of like doing it over Zoom because you know no one's driving, and yep. because we can have people on the show from really anywhere. Like we can ship the right. whiskey to them, and so right. I, I kind of like it, you know. Like it, and it just feels safer, kind of, you know. Like, uh, but there is there is it is nice if we're all sitting outside somewhere at a table too. There's another aspect of it where we're next to each other, you know, it's, it, it's give and take, you know, there's some good, some bad, but yeah. Right. Right. I think that if we did this before, before the pandemic, it would be a very different experience, but because of the pandemic and our relationship with zoom and the relationship with other people who are on zoom at the same time, there's more of a sense of intimacy that we don't have with like, can you believe we're doing this over the internet as opposed to, yeah, this tastes good. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the media <laughs> falls away and the message becomes not the media. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, I'm not, right. McClendon. No, but you're okay. right. The media does yeah. fall away. And, and and but this is the way that I feel like with all of my improv because I uh, because I was I was teaching over Zoom before the pandemic, and then when it, when the pandemic oh, wow. hit, it was like oh, I just kind of fell into this. like this is just what we're doing. Yeah. And I know a lot of improv teachers who went. Oh, I don't, I, it doesn't feel the same. It's like, dude, it's not the same. But at the core of it, there's something that is the same. Yeah. And, and for me, I feel like because of the way that you, y'all set it up, where it's like, you sent me a box, I don't have the box in front of me, that had all five of these bottles and we're doing this in this way. So we're all experiencing it at the same time. Yeah. And I think that there's something quite wonderful about that um it's it's really it's really connected which is at the core of the 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 whiskey appreciation experience i think thanks david that's like thank the, you I think that, that's I think the that's, best thing anyone said about the show it's <laughs> super it's super insightful but it's exactly why we do the show and it's it's really nice of you to say that like it really is no, thank you. it's really true because when i think about the people so so uh when when y'all sent me uh i know that we're that we're, we're running out of time but the, when you sent me when you there's no time whatever, limit it's the whatever, internet no the time, only time no is time. like when we open the whiskeys <laughs> after that it doesn't matter so one of the things that, that, you, that there was a question, I don't know, remember the, the question, but it was like, what's my experience? Like, essentially, it was, like, what's my experience with whiskey? And my right. what do you like? With what whiskey, don't you like? Well, it's that, but it's also what's my history about it, too. And it was, uh, and we haven't talked about this, I don't think, on the show. Maybe we talked about it before, I don't know. Is that idea of, I was introduced to whiskey by Mick Napier, uh, who, uh, an improv great improviser, great teacher, uh, iconoclast in a way, a really great director, um, and just a fine fucking human being. And he turned me on to whiskey uh, after we were we would do uh, classes at uh, Improv Olympic with Del Close. We would go out to a bar and just chat about it. And he would order uh, Doers on the Rocks. And I went, I don't know what that is. I'll have a Doers on the Rocks. I'll try that. And then we would just, oh, yeah. just drink Doers it. on the Rocks. It. Yeah. It's that Mick was having it. We were having it. And that helped that it's a weird thing because I, I don't want to, it seems too easy to say it lubricated the conversation, but there was something, there's something different about yeah. sitting around and sipping whiskey than there is about sitting around and drinking beer or having a, a like a, a, a pitcher of margaritas. And that's a different experience. Like this, when I say a pitcher of margaritas, you go, oh, I know what that evening's like. If I say sitting around drinking whiskey, you go, oh, the tempo of that is slower than a pitcher mm -hmm. of margaritas. And More the conversation, conversation is, exactly. You, I, the conversation I, I think it imbues you with a, a little bit more maturity. 
Um, and I don't have a lot of maturity to begin with, but when I have a whiskey, I feel like I better raise my game. So I, right. I, I feel. Yeah, I do feel right. like most of other beverages, like you talked about, you know, like a cocktail, like that's just hiding the liquor in it. You know what I mean? And the thing you get with whiskey is you know exactly how much liquor you're taking in. You are you are very aware of it. You can't not be aware of it. And that's one of the things I like about it. I'm not going to like get myself into trouble or drink too much or, I think or that's you know, a I'm putting back as much as I can. It's you're Joseph, you're that's a huge, connected. that's huge. Yeah. That's really huge is, is to say, I am aware of the amount of alcohol that I'm drinking. And, 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 and for me, it's not, it's not because I got to drive later. It's like, I want to talk to these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to have this conversation with these people. Um, if I have another, like, it's the idea of, cause I'm a big, I, I, I love smoking. I really love smoking pot. And the idea of <laughs> someone says, I got a bong. I'm like, we don't have that relationship. I don't, I don't have that relation. I don't have that bong relationship with you. Cause if we have a bong relationship, the conversation is going to be empty and we better just keep watching, I don't know, some kind of like animal show on television because we're not going to talk. I love that. And, like and I'm not, we're not at a bong level. Like I'm not going to no. help you move. I'm not going to help you move. I'm not going to pick you up at the airport and I'm not smoking a bomb no. with you. Like it's a, no, it's a level. We don't, have a level that, you know? we don't have that relationship. But when it comes to whiskey, if someone says, come on over, I got a bottle of whiskey. I'm like, okay, great. And now we get to have this conversation. Uh, so Laura's brother um, is a big whiskey drinker. And he loves the Japanese whiskey. And I know that the guests that I had watched uh, – uh, the episode that I watched, uh, she had uh, uh, experience with Japanese whiskey. And the moment that you open that up, it's like, oh, oh, we can have that kind of a conversation. Uh, do you know what I mean? We're going to have that kind of a conversation because not only do you like whiskey, but you like Japanese whiskey, which also invites us to have a conversation about Japan and what mm -hmm. that means. So it's what, you know, it's what it, I, I've never mentioned it in this episode, but I have a book called A Subversive's Guide to Improvisation. And in it, we talk about um, creative adjacency. And creative adjacency is when you have a conversation that uh, that lights on something interesting. So you go, um, Japanese whiskey, you go, Japan, let's talk about Japan. Let's talk about Japan. And then and then you get to know somebody on a different level that you don't get to know if you're smoking a bong. <laughs> you're yeah. going, let's yeah. smoke a bong. Because yeah. we're smoking a bong, it's like, those colors are pretty. I like that sound. <laughs> As opposed to- yeah, that's like far away, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. And I, I, We don't have enough time to talk about Japan, but I love Japan, don't get me wrong. Have you been to Japan? I haven't. I've always wanted to. I took Japanese in college for two years. I like. I've always been, you know, fascinated with the culture, and I've always wanted to go over there. I actually well, was hired you... to, to go over there, but I turned the job down at one point. Um, but I wish I, I was. I was when I was younger. I was hired to. Go, yeah, I was hired to go to China to teach improv in China. It's like I can't. I just can't. But you two both need to go to Japan. Like right now, I'm just talking about. It. Right now, I'm not fucking with you. Like, get, okay. right, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, shit. and that's it. Yeah, that's it. And Joseph, Andrew's got it, and you just—I mean, he has a little bit more disposable income than I do. I think it's going to take <laughs> no, me a while anymore. I, to put I bought a place in together. New York. I, it's not true. It's not true anymore. Yeah. But again, it's so, so it's that the the idea of like like your show being about whiskey is really about we're going to have we're going to talk. We're just going to yeah. talk. And if it was it was a show called you know I fucking love beer. It would be a really different conversation. It's a different show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I really I don't, I fucking I love. Wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be into that show. This show, I'm totally no. into. But, yeah. Oh, for sure. Or I fucking love bongs. It's like, no, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna be on that. Show. No, I don't think so. that could be a show. It could be a show. It could be a show where where not... where you go, where you send me five different buds, like little buds, and I'm like what? That can't um, work. You have you send the you... perfect. Wouldn't we send wouldn't you? Bongs? Wouldn't we send you bongs? Send you five bongs? Yeah, and you'd be like. No, let's try the. Oh, look at this! It's a. It looks oh, like a. It's a house. So. Now, I can't believe you got this through the mail. This is so large. 
<laughs> so many problems. So many problems we're finding with I fucking love bongs. Uh, uh, Laura, do, Laura doesn't get high. She doesn't. She doesn't drink. But yeah. but I showed her how I showed her how to, to smoke a bong, and to watch a sober person mime a bong is just the funniest goddamn thing on the planet. You know, so 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 it's this where they're going like, okay, so this is how you this is how you smoke a bong, and you you light it, and you light it, and then you go, you. Yeah. This is really good. And to watch somebody who's never smoked a bong do that, it's like I, I that that's a that's a YouTube channel uh, by itself. I swear to God, there's like there's a YouTube series where they have people who've never smoked pot, smoke pot, especially like older people who've like never done it. Now that it's it's you know people who might have been either conservative or just were like I'm not going to do that because that's crazy people illegal. when they were younger. Right. And it's illegal. And so like, yeah, it's watching them go like, oh, wow, this is kind of awesome. You know, and I want that show, but with acid. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I was such a big acid. Like I've done acid so many times. It's like I wanted to see people like grandpa doing like just a fucking half a hit of Microdot. Just fucking half a hit of Microdot. Yeah. Can we just, yeah. just have a hit, grandpa? It's like, all right, let's see what happens. Um, anyway, I. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, Mo, Mo says I, I've got a place to stay in Kyoto if we if we go to Japan. So yeah, I, I would. Oh love my to god! I think it'd be wait like, a minute. So Kyoto is the greatest city in Japan. <laughs> Both of you, let's stop talking now. Get get that book. Okay, get on a, so get Mo, on a plane to Japan. We'll to get that out. Kyoto is one. Of those I fucking places. love Japan. Yeah. And when you go I to Japan, whiskey. when you go to when you, when you go to Japan, the whiskey in Japan is great. The sake in Japan is great. The food is yeah. great. And of course, the the sushi is like it, that's where it comes from. Yeah. You know, any sushi I want some that of that. Get. I want some of that real wasabi that's made from actual. That's not just mustard. Ooh, actual wasabi. That's yeah. with green dye in it. Like I want to have some real wasabi so badly. Yeah, I really not like just that. green horseradish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a place called Skiji, which is uh, that used to be in one particular location in in Tokyo, which is. Uh, 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 where all the, where all the seafood comes in, it's it's a harbor, and all the seafood comes in there. And you get there at five o'clock in the morning, uh, like a, a lay person would get there at five o'clock in the morning. And you come in, and you just walk through, like to see what people are selling, and it's just like crazy fish. And then after you do that, you watch the the tuna auction, and then at six o'clock in the morning, you go to sushi joints. They have small little like twelve seat sushi joints that you can sit in they probably have a dozen of them or, or like a little bit more and you're right you're next eating, to the pier right next to the pier like yeah. you are eating sushi that will net like if there was a sushi if there was a fishing boat that had a sushi restaurant on it that's the only time you're going to get fresher <laughs> fresher sushi but it is gorgeous and beautiful and the whiskey like have you, uh, uh, Andrew? Have you had the Japanese whiskey on the show? I've had some. There's, there, there's good stuff. I really don't know anything. I could not even. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's All kind right. of a well we need to get into. We've definitely had it on yeah. the show. Like I have a, I have some here, and and I, I I've liked it whenever I've had it. So you know, yeah. it's so it's so one. It's just great. It's it's great. It's really exciting that you haven't had it because it's like, oh, there's another thing for you to for, for you to go like to do. As if you had to do something more. It's a it's a deep hole. That's that's all I gotta say. <laughs> it's a deep hole. <laughs> it's a deep hole. Um, I I you know this is this is what I love about drinking whiskey is at least these conversations and you want to keep them going and going and going and going and going. Uh, but I understand that you may have a life and Laura will come home at some point, David. Um, and Thad so probably it, has something to do at some point as well. Really? I I I, no, I, feel... I don't know. Thad's married. His life's over. That's, isn't that right, Thad? <laughs> Suddenly, all of the tech just shuts down for the show, and, <laughs> and our show is never That's aired the again. Show. That's Jesus. all, folks. <laughs> calling it <an> audible. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're not wrong. I, uh, I, 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 I did all my fun stuff earlier this morning. No. Wait, oh, was this on. part of the fun stuff? This is not part of the fun stuff. What? Okay, this is part of the fun stuff. But also, like, all right, so this is going to be real boring for a lot of people, but I went to the, Nat Nat uh, the Nat Natural History Museum today. So. Okay, that's awesome. I love the, that natural Beautiful history. Place. I got to see a bunch of butterflies, which is really awesome. So, 
I fucking love butterflies, which is my podcast. <laughs> Fuck you, it's mine. I fucking yeah, love butterflies. Hello. We're not, we're not gonna fight you. No, 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 no. And it's like I what I what I do is I send I send everybody five butterflies before the show. And we get to look at the butterflies and then one at a time we just talk about the butterflies. <laughs> Yeah, you taste them. Yeah, <laughs> or they just—it's just like, oh, that's, oh, that, yeah, it was, it was well, pretty, good earlier. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I don't. Well, David, may I just say, that. I'm glad you've come out of your chrysalis, your chrysalis, chrys, what's it called? <laughs> chrysalis. It's a chrysalis. Chrysalis. The chrysalis. No, chrysalis. A, I think I said it right. I think it's got chrysalis. It right. It's totally nailed yeah. it. I nailed it. We'll I fix, nailed it. We'll fix it. And fix it in post. Fix it in post. Yeah. <laughs> There's no post. Ah, <laughs> uh, um, David, I I hate to like come. We've had so much fun. I, I hate to get serious on you now. I, this this really dismays me. But but you know we are doing science on the show, and we have to really make sure we've connected the dots. So, um, Joseph has a question. Are you going to make me ask it? All right. I think you're David. This is uh, this is a, we're going to be serious here, and we we just need to know. David. I was I was hoping for this moment. Yeah, this it happens every show. So you're, I know your yeah. your hopes yeah. are fulfilled. Um, do you like whiskey? This is the first time I've ever had whiskey, but I fucking love whiskey. Ah, <laughs> 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 everywhere. <laughs> 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 Like so, right now, what you y'all need to do is talk to KNL and get them to sponsor this fucking thing, because this show is like crazy awesome. Oh, and thank you. but it really, really is like no one else is doing a show like this. And if anybody was smart, they would put they would they they would help you get this word out. All right, that's all. I'm just gonna say it. that's it. That's all, all right. We love, David we is love our new it. marketing we love, manager. Yeah. If we love doing it, that's mostly why we do it. Because we love doing it. Like, that's, you know. I think it's the only reason we do, a, to do a show like this. Because it is so much work. And, you know, if you don't love doing it, you can't really ex necessarily expect it to, like, do go take you anywhere. You just do it because you love doing it, you know. so Right. And right, But you're really it. good at it. And, and I've been on many podcasts. And uh, 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 just not everybody needs to know this. But it was just really easy. Like, you made it easy for me to do this. Like, you sent me these bottles. And... It was just it was just a really great experience. So Excellent. you know, really well, we were super appreciate you being on the show. Uh, yeah. You know, huge fans of of you and everything you've done. Um, yeah, and I have uh, Michael, your book. And Michael, everybody, if you're watching the show, you should buy uh, by David's yes, book. The book. Yeah, uh, um, I can, I don't know if Thad's put it down below. Uh, he may have put a link to it or at least the hashtag. Uh, I what is it? Book. What is the name of the book, David? A Subversive's Guide to Improvisation, and it's just it's it's. Even if you don't like improvisation, and it, like I get it, it's just a horrible thing to watch. Um, <laughs> it's really like it's just about you living your life, uh, being more connected to what you're doing, your 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 relationship with people. It's like it's just a really really fun book, and I I think it's really beautiful. Uh, it's like the book itself looks beautiful. Um, I, I think really it's really great to have a book by a guy who tortures cats the way your cats are telling us that Absolutely. you like right them. now yeah. it's like why, why why are we eating it's like you know they're, what? they're yeah. like we've yeah. never been fed we've never yeah. not, not once has he fed us the beating not, a, not yeah. one not one time we're you know, starving uh, that sounds like a cat owner right there right I, right yeah, yeah. i have no, two cats no. i also have two cats yeah right yeah. but that's it. it's like the history of cats like they've never yeah. fed us never they've fed never, us. Fed never. Us. never and fed we us. get beaten regularly um i just want to say uh thad thank Thank you for being the most awesome uh, part of our show, uh, doing the tech and and the best tasting notes. Although he wasn't going uh, drinking along with us yet today because of the, uh, the the birthday yesterday. Apparently something happened. I don't know what it was. I can't correlate the two events. Um, uh, Joseph, uh, David, your cats, uh, Pez reviews, Miss Sim, Mo. Uh, thank you, everybody. Asparagus. Love you. Tis, oh, yeah. Tipsy, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's it. Thank you, everybody. Um, uh, yeah. Slodge, everybody. Have a happy Slodge Saturday. It. Oh, I don't know. Like, I haven't emptied that. Imagine uh -oh. that has that. There in. you go. Oh, look <laughs> at that. That kind of looks like that. All right. That